Okay, awesome. Welcome everybody to another week of uh, the community calls for the research hub. Um, so we've got a few topics today. Um, we'll, we'll probably get started with, with Kobe who is gonna try to garner a bunch of feedback on some some specific topics regarding the uh, kind of the new future direction uh, and, and layout and UI UX of the platform. So Kobe, you wanna go for it? Yeah. Is my link to that document again? Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll share a link with you guys. Um, yes. So, and I think what we're going to do is next week, um, I'm away right now, but uh, next week I'll be uh, fully back. And what I want to do is I want to share with you the document. And I will also be able to share some um, screenshots of uh, the newly designed product that, um, you know, of what, research hub will look like. I want to share that with you and collect some feedback. Uh, but until then, a little bit of an update. So we're basically, I consider like research hub up until this point, or at least that's my, my own personal consideration. I consider it to be an experiment. So we have tried a lot of different things. We tried this and that, and we kind of know what works and what doesn't work. We know what we have uh, a good idea of what what direction we should go after, um, and not to say that we will be entirely right, but at this point in time, we know that you know funding is something we want to go after. We want to go after more notebook features, integrate the notebook more like seamlessly into the app, <clears throat> improve the reputation system improve the home page make the app like much uh, simpler and more polished uh, make make the um give people like a, a, a better understanding of what research coin is all about and what research hub can do at a glance when they come to the home page so we know we know a bunch of things right um and until we get there so next week i'll share some uh, some stuff with you so there is like a couple of questions. I just wanted to collect some feedback. If you have some feedback, great. And if you don't, that's okay too. You can look at the document that uh, Jeff shared and maybe you can add some, uh, some comments in there. So the first topic I wanted to collect feedback on is particularly with the homepage. So the homepage right now, when you go to Research Hub, there's like um, a couple of things going on with the homepage. First of all, the homepage is not really personalized uh, for a person. Uh, there is no like preferences uh, based on your reading history or based on like the things you care about. Like we don't show you content based on that. And that's got its pros and cons. There is like some pros and cons here. So that's uh, one thing um, that we're going to address. But uh, I guess my question is to you is, in an ideal world, what type of content would you like to see on the homepage? Um, and I can give you more guidance into what I mean by that. But before I do that, I don't want to like, uh, I guess, constrain the, the feedback here. So just like, there is no right or wrong answer. Just like what in your field, or like for in your preference, in your opinion, what would you like to see in the homepage? I can start um, personally. I, I'd like to see like um, like a nice, easy way to filter through whatever open bounties exist. Um, where if I'm like a lot of my job is like there's five or ten minute incubations, and so if I can just hop into Research Hub in between my like during my incubations, filter through the Neuroscience Hub, look at all open bounties. If I can take five or ten minutes to answer somebody's question, um, it would really like optimize and kind of make everybody's life efficient. The person gets their answer. I use up my five or 10 minutes to earn some research coin. Um, so mm -hmm. I think like an easy way to filter and make the bounties discoverable. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, right now it's like literally impossible to see them in the, in the homepage. So no doubt. Edwin, I think uh, you're on mute by the way. Sorry. 
I think the default papers that are displayed should be based on the hubs that you're interested in, and then you can default to like you know everything else that everybody on the site is interested in. Because um, I'd imagine that as we grow, especially it won't, it won't make sense for people to have just like whatever, like the whole range of academic interests and just like whatever papers are popular. So, mm -hmm. yeah, th that makes sense. Um, the one, the one thing here that uh, Satvik made a good point um, in the document we're discussing. There is a the one criticism to that, and and there is no, I guess there is no like a perfect solution here. But like one of the things. Uh, in, one of the things that you said that made a good sense is that in order to personalize content, we need to track your uh, certain types of data. So like, uh, you know, like you're going to give us some hub data and, and then we keep track of that and we can personalize based on that. Then, of, of course, as the algorithms become more advanced and, and maybe we start to monitor your... Um, reading behavior and i hit the word monitor because it sounds like we're kind of like watching you but if we wanted to go down that route it can be it can it does go against uh, the web3 like uh i guess notion of you know anti-tracking etc um so it's something to consider here but i agree that uh at the very least we should take into account the data that you want to give us which is the hub data like i want i'm interested in this and we should show you that content yeah maybe it's just not a problem worth addressing now yeah i agree it will definitely become like a a problem in the future but until then it's uh it's it's definitely something we can uh, we can do something about. Okay, so anything else? Uh, I'm just curious. Like, what about the type of content? So, like uh, personalized content, but like, I guess let just you know, the type of content that we should consider is also important. Do we want to see? Do you want to see more? social behavior content and i'm not like you know no just like it could be like uh you can see like uh some tier one content which we consider is like published content like papers and stuff like that or it could be like uh more social content like for example like jeff has uh supported this paper uh with 500 rc is that something you're interested in seeing? Personally, a big fan of uh, reaction to content and visibility of such. For example, if there is a trend in paper, and this paper can be trending based on the internal metrics, right? So people interacting with it or external, like alt metric type thing. But then it would be cool to see not just the paper card, but also the snippets of uh, profound interactions with it. For example, if there is a trend in comment that everyone responds to, maybe we can show a preview of that comment underneath a paper or just the first few lines and the see more button or something. And if there is a, if someone supported with REC, that can also be added somewhere on the paper card so we can see that people are excited about this paper. Yeah, that, that sounds, yeah, for sure. Like uh, something we're thinking about, we're kind of like at a a crossroad right now of like, like how much of these interactions do we want to show you? What's the fine balance between showing you like nice tier one content uh, versus like uh, social content? Like because obviously, if you show a bit too much social content, then maybe that becomes a bit more like a Twitter. And it loses the um, the uh, I guess the the, the gravity of uh, the science um, at a glance, at least. But I agree, Anton, that there is like a maybe like a good balance here. I think personally, um, the one thing that I worry about with like getting little snippets of like the threads through the discussions is there's sometimes there's not a lot of context. 
say like there's like a comment that gets like a lot of kind of activity and it shows up on the news feed but it's just like a kind of snippet of an entire grander thread you might not have enough context to understand where that thread plugged into everything else and maybe it's you kind of will just browse and go by it because you don't have the full picture there so that's one thing that i worry about especially with something that's like maybe more like scientifically demanding you know where you need to have all that context to really make sense of it um mm -hmm. and uh yeah and I talked with Kobe a bit too on the Slack, but yeah, I think like the tier one content definitely highlight and then maybe like use a notification system or maybe just slightly sprinkle in some kind of tier two content. Um, but I think it would be, it would really like muffle a lot of the tier one content if we threw in everything that's like this person liked this or upvoted and supported this, you know, that's just my two cents. Yeah, the best, um, well, I guess I'll tell you what we, the best uh, idea I came up with so far. But before I do that, I don't want to, um, I guess, hinder any other ideas. Because once I say, I say what I'm going to say, it's going to affect how you're thinking, uh, whatever feedback you're going to give. So anything else? I'm, I'm really curious about like the type of content that you want to see. Um, and um like it doesn't have to be papers it can be like other things too mm -hmm. like do we think we like is it worth showing experiments like um i don't know like how uh, would we display studies? experiments i'm not even <clears throat> Yeah, I guess like um, I'm not entirely sure. That's something I would need your help with because it could be like um, right now we kind of consider most of the tier one content is like papers. So it could be that maybe um, experiment is not the right way to say it, but maybe like uh, it's like a type of paper, maybe or like a, maybe like a a study or. Um, an RCT or something like that, where it's a paper that we that takes into account there is like an experiment within um, obviously the paper, but it's not so much as an experiment as a standalone thingy. Do you mean do you mean papers produced uh, in the house in research hub published there? Um. Well, I guess. Yeah. I mean. That is also a problem uh, separately, I guess. Um, there is like papers that are external and there is uh, papers that are produced in Research Hub. And right now we don't have too many of those, uh, but we should distinguish like, okay, let's say you do um, write a paper in Research Hub. I think uh, we sh what I would like to do is to have some kind of a, um, a tagging system where maybe you create a paper there is uh, the first thing you see when you like um, open the notebook is cr you're creating a note and then you you have a bunch of template op options to choose from one of them is um, just a scientific paper in which case we like insert like the basic structure of a paper like uh, um, abstract you know conclusion methods and materials and all that and there is like other stuff as well like for example like a protocol someone mentioned um like in the lab i guess like uh you know where you uh follow like particular procedures uh i, I don't have a lot of insight into that but uh, that can be another template and then we denote them in the home page uh there could be like something you see in, in in the home page if that's the type of content you um you're interested in and you think is worth uh, showcasing. See, I think that would be more useful, but I'm not convinced that that would increase engagement. So it depends <laughs> on what our goal is, I suppose. And what is your goal in redoing the homepage? Yeah, I th it's a very good question. Uh, so my my goal, and I think the organization's goal, is a few things. So the first thing is to address like a uh, a fragmented product like we have a bunch of features that are not coming together cohesively like the notebook and 
and the feed and uh, the leaderboard, they're really, they feel very segmented and they don't uh, adhere well. And second problem is that we don't well, How did to... you guys come to that conclusion though? That just like, what are, are there, is there a reason that you've decided it's fragmented or is it the lack of um, engagement or, or is yeah, it just it's like based, intuition? Uh, yeah, so a lot of it because we don't have a lot of users at this point. A lot of uh, the product decisions uh, up until now, they're, they're going to be intuition based, but the intuition is good. Like, yeah, it's not just intuition based. It's uh, so there is some database. Um, it, it's also based on data because like we see like how many people are creating notes and how many of those notes that are being created are being published. Very few. And we see we also get a lot of uh, problems uh, like questions like oh how do i publish what what does it mean to publish what does the eln mean all kinds of questions like that that really make me feel like something is off what does it mean to upload a paper do i need to upload my own paper what like what does it mean so a lot of people are confused about um what are the actions that you can take on research hub what is research coin what what can how can i earn it like what well, couldn't we just like, have like a explainer video? I mean, it seems like we could just teach them how to use the site if that's the issue. I mean, I, to me, it would make more sense to teach people how to use the site than redo the entire thing under the assumption that it's fragmented. Like, it would make more sense to just try to teach people. And then if that was still a problem, then you could, you know, come, come to that, that conclusion. I would second that, that overhauling our like UI for like our website might not be the best use of like time with everything else we have going on, but uh, maybe other people agree or disagree. Yeah, I think uh, maybe, you know, I'm not like, uh, I think for the sake of time, I'm not really going into too much detail about like the issues. Um, so if you look at the uh, document that I shared, You'll see that when I say things like uh, the product is fragmented, etc., it's not. Some of it is intuition based. Some of that is uh, based on data. Some of it, uh, there is a lot, and also it's not just. These are not the the um, the entirety of the issues. There is a lot more to it. So <clears throat> you can read uh, through the product, um, and there is also the other notion of like. There is a ton of features we want to to be building, but if you really think about from a building integrating like new features into the research hub ecosystem, um, they don't really mash in too well. Like for example, like um, like if you wanted to uh, do simple things like feature content in the home page. And stuff like that, um, it poses quite a difficulty with the current UI system. So it, it becomes like a problem from a different, many different perspectives. And I think it will be really great if you guys can take a look at the document I shared, <clears throat> and maybe you add your comments, and uh, we can continue this dialogue in Notion. Okay. But there is, uh, yeah, there is there is one. One other thing I wanted to to actually add here. So my my personal belief is that like let's say a video can only do so much. Like if your product doesn't convey value at a glance, then you have a problem. And that's that's based on like <clears throat> my own like uh, personal experience working on different products. Like if you if you have to produce a video in order to convey what your product does, then maybe you should be looking at your product a bit more thoroughly. Maybe the video, like I also question whether people are actually going to watch videos and and really try to um, to understand them. It seems simple, right? Like who is not going to watch like a one minute video? But to me, it's a symptom of something that's like a bit more problematic. Yeah, that's really interesting, Kobe. I mean, part of the problem is just like, because of the type of product you're trying to build, there are going to be a ton of different features. 
Mm -hmm. And it's also not clear what the best way into all of that is. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, you're right. There is no like, um, there is no like um, easy path here. It's kind of like, here is the thing. We have like, um, if you look at a document, you'll see that it's divided into about 20 different categories. So these are 20 or more different things that we want to build. And right now, when you look at them holistically from a product perspective, and you try to isolate them. So like, let's say we wanted to improve the reputation system, et cetera. You can, you can build them right now into the product. You can mash them in. You can make it work. But if you're really thinking about the long term, which we're trying to think about, we're trying to think about how do we integrate, how do we solve like these like 20 or so different problems into Research Hub. And it's not going to be something we are able to do right now. Um, it's going to take us a while. How do we get there? And, and the answer is that the product needs to be uh, a little bit different. So I know that um, maybe when we talk about UI, et cetera, like the idea, the, the first feeling that comes up is why something needs to be prettier in order to be functional. But um, I guess the differentiation here is that there is uh, the user experience, which is different, different than the user interface. So what we're trying to solve here is for like a user experience that addresses all the different things that we want to build. And, you know, that may be like, uh, seems like a little bit like an overkill, but um, that's why I like invite you guys to um, take a look at the document and, uh, and maybe hopefully you'll, you'll see things a little different. Hi, uh, Kobe, can, can you hear me okay? Um, yeah, yeah, Nathan, yes, please go ahead. Um, sorry, I, I was just reading through the whole document. It's the first, first time I've seen it. Um, and my first thought to that, I completely agree with you. I, I completely agree that the product is fragmented and not cohesive. I agree that there's some like serious UI issues at the moment. And, and by that, I, I want to like clarify what I mean by that. Um, mm -hmm. The UI at the moment is perfectly expl explanatory for a product that is essentially research, crypto does research game. In other words, it is an open access paper upload site, which mm -hmm. has some interesting crypto incentives aligned. And if that was the product, the UI does make sense. And we just need to, but, but it doesn't make sense to then add in all the other features that are in different tabs that make it messy, if that makes sense. Um, now, I understand, my understanding of what you guys have been doing over the last few months is essentially trialing a bunch of different products and seeing, okay, where, where might we get product market fit? Where might we get traction? If, if we, you know, try this knowledge as a service thing, do we get traction with that? If we try, you know, um, peer reviews, do we get traction with that? And I understand it, but I, I completely agree that the UI needs to be in line with the, um, in line with the actual product that's, that's set by the team and the core team and the vision that's set by the core team. Um, and, and I understand why some of the, you know, us, you know, old users don't see that because we've been there since it was mainly a research gate, the crypto as research gate type thing. I mean, my thoughts on what are important, I think it's kind of a founder led decision really in terms of like, what is the core vision of, of the product? But my opinion is that a research hub lives or dies on research coin, because that is the unfair advantage of the founders. I understand mm -hmm. any other site could make a competitor to the existing, you know, um, academic institutions. But if we're going to do it crypto, we have to emphasize the crypto. And at the moment, I don't see any, uh, whenever I explain the product, I'm not able to clearly demonstrate the value that's added by research coin on top of the features of the site if that makes sense other than something vague about a government's too mm -hmm. yeah and we want people to uh, thanks nathan for saying that and i think um 
um, yeah, what sparked this whole like uh, need to even create this document is uh, growing frustration for myself. Um, and, and the frustration comes from a good place. Like I get frustrated when I care. Like I work as part of this team and I want Research Hub to live up to its full potential. And it's, um, I felt compelled to start this document. And then um, a lot of the, the feedback is based, uh, it's not my own personal opinion, it's based on um, a lot of the conversation I have had, I've had with uh, a bunch of you. Um, so I think that uh, when it comes to research coin, I wanna address that point. Yes, I do agree that research coin is the unique advantage that we have. And um, right now, um, when you come to the site, you don't, we don't really highlight that. You don't know how to earn. And so if we want to make research coin a thing, what I'm trying to say is that let's give it the, the focus it needs. Um, and, and to piggyback off of what Jeff said, when you come to the homepage, maybe you should see some bounties. Maybe you should see some ways to earn. Um, maybe um, if you're like in a particular field, like, um, if you're, um, I don't know, in like uh, computer science, and maybe we should notify you when a new paper is uploaded that you could be earning some research coin by peer reviewing this paper. Uh, so there is like a, a bunch of ideas that we have that hopefully this, uh, um, you know, document will address and then subsequently like some mocks. Um, <clears throat> okay, please, uh, by the way, so I know we're talking about the homepage, but it's kind of tricky because it's not really just the homepage. This is a overall research hub plus plus, I suppose is the right way to say it. It's like a new version of research hub that's not going to be like we're overhauling the whole system like right now. This is like a roadmap to achieve certain certain like milestones. And this is the beginning of the discussion of how we can hit these milestones. The homepage is just like a, a symptom of like the underlying like uh, thing we're actually trying to do. So um, Edwin, please go ahead. So I'll put this in the document, but I just had an idea that I wanted to talk about there. So if you go to the homepage right now, you know, you see the, you know, publish, leaderboard, etc. you know, the papers, everything. Um, and it's kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's like a lot of other social media, mm -hmm. um, which kind of is, so for example, the, the homepage on Facebook assumes that you're on Facebook to interact with content. Um, how's, so in, in so? a similar way, because you, you get the scroll, right? So uh -huh. it's like the first thing, you, when I go to Facebook, you know, before engaging with like the groups or going and looking at my own page or doing whatever, you know, all the different options that there are, uh, I just scroll because, you know, that's, they're kind of sort of nudging you towards that. Um, but with Research Hub, it seems to me that if you're talking about having 20 different things, people are going to want to use Research Hub for different reasons, depending on what they're doing. So for some people, bounties are going to be more important. For others, just like keeping up with what's going on is going to be more important. Um, so it might actually make sense to have like a simpler home page where there's like something very simple that just lists um, like the different ways, not even lists, but just gives you like links to the different ways in which you could engage with the site. Um, mm -hmm. I'm imagining like something very like bare bones, uh, just elegant, where you can decide to go to the page and interact um, with the, the papers that are being, uh, or go to the hubs, or go and see the bounties. But literally something very simple, where you're not sort of just thrust into dealing or, or into interacting with all the papers that are posted, because, uh, like you said. <clears throat> I'm looking at this right now. I go to research hub. I'm thinking this is basically like an open access journal that has additional features. Um, but if it's like, you know, just like a clear page with the different ways in which you could interact with the site, 
that might make it smoother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the solution here is that, <laughs> well, I don't know what the right solution is, but we I know that it must be simpler. Right now, it's very mm -hmm. overwhelming. And some of you have talked to me and like uh, my personal opinion about like in general, when you design a product is that emotion plays like a huge role. If someone, it doesn't matter, if, even if you have good value, but the emotion that you make people feel when you go to a shitty site is like one of frustration or overwhelming certain type of feeling, they're not going to come back to the site. That might be like a bit of a extreme like point of view, but that's how I feel. Um, and right now when I go to Research Hub, I feel, I try to focus on how I feel. I feel a little bit overwhelmed. That's not the type of feeling we want to cultivate. So simplicity is a step in the right direction here. Um, Satvik or Nathan, uh, maybe Satvik, you go next because uh, Nathan went last time. Uh, so my point is, in, uh, is just in continuation with what Edwin said. I think uh, what Edwin said could be used very well in uh, implementing the personalization of the homepage that we're thinking of. Right? Uh, and the way to go about it could be that we provide uh, a few onboarding questions. Uh, for example, uh, the way Reddit does, uh, and maybe we can ask people if if they are here to earn some RSC or if they're here to explore uh, what's happening in science. Maybe that could be a question that we ask. Uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, this sets up sort of a, a default state for that user. And then that default state gets uh, gets more and more permanent based on their activity on the website. So if they're constantly engaging with bounty questions, uh, we realize that this user is deeply interested in this. And then we then the home page becomes more and more geared towards bounty questions. That could be mm -hmm. a way of going about it without, because I don't think we should, uh, I think what Edwin was suggesting was that every time you open Research Hub, you get, I think, four different buttons that you, do you want to earn bounties or do you want to explore science or something like that? I don't think that could be like adding an additional step before getting to the meat should not be something that we should, we consider, but this could be a way of sort of implementing personalization without a lot of uh, invasive tracking and also providing what's valuable to the user directly. Mm. Yeah, no, you make a lot of good points, especially about the onboarding and, and really trying to understand what the user is after when they come to Research Hub. Um, yeah, like, okay, let's great stuff um nathan uh i guess jeff do we have time do you have, you have i know you want to go over some other stuff no i think this is going to be like the lion's share of the commentary was going to be on this i think it's a very important topic um also uh, after nathan i think i want to uh, also give time for i think tyler to just jump in and give us his opinion as he is kind of a set of fresh eyes so yeah mm -hmm. after nathan and tyler if you wouldn't mind yeah, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I just wanted to contrast it with, you know, one of the, you know, more successful D side projects in the space. So Vita DAO. Mm -hmm. So if it, is it all right if I very quickly um, share my screen, Jeffrey? Is that right? Yeah, uh, you do. You can, have access to it. Yeah, I think so. Hang on. Okay. Uh, can you see that? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think. The, the, so if we contrast Research Hub to, to VitaDAO here, I, I feel like what they get right is that they are giving us the value proposition in a very clear message straight away. So they've got a very specific goal and they've got a clear mission on the front. And then they're selling us, you know, the value proposition of Vita token over just using your dollars for funding longevity research, because there's, there's plenty of, of projects that look at, you know, fundraising uh, essentially like a sort of uh, crowdsourcing of fundraising of research. But but we need to talk about why what the crypto token value proposition is. And then it's just a sort of banner of, you know, the, the amount of wins that they've had so far and why other people are 
getting on board, giving you that sense of FOMO that you need to be on board on this train because it's going towards DSI, et cetera. Um, th that's the sort of thing where, you know, we could have, you know, this number of bounties have been completed. This mem number of peer reviews have been completed. This is what research coin is. This is what we're doing. This is our mission, democratizing and, you know, um, enhancing the pace, accelerating the pace of science. Mm -hmm. I think that that would be a clearer, um, proposition than what we've got at the moment which is i mean it's good but i think it's it's on a different path than i think the team are looking at at the moment so yeah, can no, i i know yeah. can i just jump in one second nathan it seems though that we we don't have like a we haven't come to an agreement about what we want research coin to be right so before to, i mean from all the messaging i've gotten from the team it seems people they there's a strong focus on making sure that the product isn't built around people wanting to make money, which, you know, people can think different ways about that. Um, but if that's the case, I, you know, highlighting it, um, I, I don't know. I, I think like we need to, to have sort of come to an agreement of what we think the role of research coin is in all of this, because it seems like the team has a stronger version to putting research coin at the forefront yeah there is uh there is definitely something here so i think um some of the good stuff like nathan definitely makes a good point that yeah we we need a value proposition and and maybe like earning money uh via research coin might seem a little gimmicky so we have to be very careful when we how we approach it however there are various things you can do on the site like peer reviews uh, we support open science publishing um it is a bunch of stuff we can leverage here and maybe that should go into the value prop and we had various discussions in the past about like uh what is research hub mission etc and um like it's it's not distilled into one sentence but i definitely think we can do something here and uh there is room for it in the home page but i also hear you edwin when you say let's uh be a little careful when you showcase like uh focus too much on like uh research coin just like uh for example that's not my edwin. argument actually that's not my argument i actually think we should focus more on research coin but i'm saying that the team okay has had an aversion to that. I see, I see the team like yeah. us. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, no, 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 I guess, yeah, you're right. That uh, we have a bit of a <laughs> an aversion to it because we, we feel uncomfortable because the people around us uh, in the, the realm of science, it's kind of weird. It comes down from this notion that it's weird to earn money and do science. It's it, it, not... <laughs> It shouldn't it's confusing to me, it. to be honest. I <laughs> I don't get I, it, but it's kind of like uh, science is this, uh, almost like in a pursuit of truth, and it it almost like adds a little bit of a conflict of interest. I'm not saying that that's what I think, but that is uh, um, I think it like a little money, bit of I mean. weird dance around science. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Um, Yes, uh, Nathan, was there anything else you wanted to add, I guess, before we... Uh... Yeah, just uh, two super quick points, and I, I really want to make sure Tyler gets gets a, a chance. Um, I, I guess what I put in the chat there is just, I'm not saying, I, I think there's a misunderstanding. No one's saying that on the homepage it should be get by research coins so that you get rich. That's definitely not the case. What I'm saying is it is core to the product because otherwise we're building a non-crypto product. This is a crypto product. Uh, it, it, would make, it wouldn't make sense for this team to not make a crypto product, if that makes sense, unless you know, Brian wants to pivot away from, from crypto on this, on this one. Um, and so I thought I'd just read out you know, what they say about Vita Token on their homepage. It's just, it's a central component of the Vita DAO ecosystem. It grants its holders rights to participate in decision-making within the DAO. And then it talks about the projects they funded, et cetera. So we are a funding body and the token gives you rights to say, to influence the decisions of the funding decisions that are made. Very, very clear. Um, 
it, my question to you, I think, Kobe, is do you get the sense that the mission at the moment isn't clear because you are, uh, there's nothing wrong with the startup pivoting, but is it that you are pivoting to see what gets traction at the moment? You aren't quite clear what direction you should be going in. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess um, I would say that uh, we're not necessarily pivoting. I guess pivoting is one way to put it, but uh, we're kind of like going after the areas where we have the most signals. So we have the most signals that the reputation on the site needs uh, significant improvement. Um, like for example, like Patrick Joyce is the top reputation person and maybe, um, sorry, I'm getting an incoming call. Uh, okay, I'm back, can you guys hear me? Okay. It is, so long story short, uh, we have a lot of signals and we're going to go after them. We're not going to pivot into uh, something else. Now, when it comes to the mission, the mission is, um, I think, is uh, a bit, it's not distilled into one easy sentence like uh, Vita Dao. And I think the reason why is because it, we're trying a lot of different things. And we're trying to almost create like a platform that really disrupts science from various angles. And it becomes like a difficult way to distill it into an easy to explain one liner elevator pitch type thing. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, throw my thoughts here. And, uh, but, but I definitely hear what you guys are all saying. And, uh, and yeah, there is a lot of value here. By the way, I'm, I'm getting a lot of out of this conversation and I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and take this all into account and hopefully be able to show you something, something nice next yeah. week. Um, sorry, Nathan, was there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, sorry, I really, really quick follow up to what you said, which is that I do agree with what you're saying and that the mission is clear, but you're trying different things. Uh, but but I agree with you that the UI is influencing the signals that you're getting. So it's not clear at the moment when you go onto the site that there is this bounty feature. It's not clear that there's this peer review feature. So the signals are getting distorted, like the data that you're getting, you're not really giving those other features a chance because it's still research gate. Crypto does research gate when you enter the site. And so that is gonna dominate the usage of the site. Um, sorry, Tyler, please, please do um, add in your thought. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is the mic working? Can you hear me? I think it was off earlier. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So a couple of points too, um, if you don't mind. Um, number one is I haven't had the time to do a full deep dive. I was actually away on vacation when I found the project and just reached out to you guys right away. So this is a very cursory overview. But looking at the homepage, I did have the same kind of comments that it wasn't clear um, what was different about it from ResearchGate. And then it mostly seemed to be a repository of scholarly papers. And then I had to kind of dig a little deeper to find out what is actually going on. And so I do think the redesign could be very helpful. And I think specifically a one to three minute video about exactly what you guys have been talking about, about what is unique. Like, why do we need to do this on chain? How is it different from you know, the typical way of doing things? And I think that comes back to the value proposition, which is that when you do things on chain like this, you can cut out the middleman. And if you cut out the middleman, you increase the efficiency of you know, all of the effort that goes into this ecosystem. And specifically, um, I think one of the biggest things that really could help this project propel forward is that if it becomes this sort of decentralized um, publication, so like, you know, kind of like a big, uh, not like Elsevier, but something a little smaller to start with, but the way in, and it's kind of a, a broader picture, but I do think that's the most powerful one. Like in all the people I talk to in science, that's the biggest issue, right? It's that academics put all this effort into their publications. They act as reviewers, they act as editors, they pay these fees, and then the money goes away. Right, it's like a billion dollars goes to Elsevier in profit every year. But that's money that could be recycled back to the user. So just as a broad topic of like where I think the biggest value could be, it's in my opinion, it's probably over in that domain. But that being said, I understand that's a, a very far a ways away. And so for the basic kind of product here, I think exactly what you guys are saying about building the use case. Like why do we need the research coin? What is the research coin? Why should people even trust crypto? Because a lot of people in academics either don't trust crypto, don't know what it is, think it's a scam. So I think a couple quick informational videos, and especially on the homepage, I did really like the idea of a couple different buttons that you can click. So for example, you know, earn research coin, uh, explore publications, publish, uh, discuss. Just a couple things to kind of highlight quick little ideas of what you could do on the platform. 
Like yeah, that. thank you, Tyler. That's very helpful. Yeah, and um, I actually have a couple of friends who I'm going to be introducing to the platform this week, so about two to four people. And so I'm going to ask them all the questions that you guys have been bringing up about what's difficult as a new user, like what's preventing them from staying on the platform, and then what do they want to see. So hopefully yeah. I'll get some good feedback by next week. Uh, I yeah, think it's really you. interesting that on a cursory glance of, of the site, Tyler, uh, as in uh, on your first experience, that you you see it as this competitor to you know Elsevier and the traditional publishers, because that's what my view would be as well. No, yeah. having you used, used the site for a while, but but I can also see that you know the site could get loads of traction for the bounty feature. I mean, anyone who's a fan of the All In podcast knows that Friedberg was talking about something like that about the Alzheimer's issue just last week, and you know there's a lot of incentive to for, for someone to come up with a true true proposition for that so but but then we would need a whole new ui for that because currently um, that's not really getting the credit it deserves on the site i suppose yeah so Kobe, exactly. i'm curious what do you think the point like what do you think the uh value proposition of research coin is yeah <laughs> i'm going to refrain from adding like uh i guess there is my opinion and there is the opinion of uh the greater team because the two are differ differ my my main interest uh in product is really to design a good product when it comes to tokenomics i will be the first one to say that i'm not i don't have the best ideas so what i will say i'll give you like a really generic like dodging the answer kind of answer of like um i think research coin the way i see it from in my view my personal view is that i see research coin as a token for a scientific ecosystem right now that that aims to reward good science good behavior in science and what good behavior that's difficult we're not going to define that right now but um aims to credit certain things like peer review etc and and maybe in the future it can be used as a token instead of a us dollar to replace certain things in the um, ecosystem of science now that is uh what i view research coin as um now what patrick joyce and the rest of the team view might be a little different uh i think more experiments are needed uh but yeah hopefully that doesn't like scare you away or anything like that <laughs> um and what i will say is that um i'm very critical of our product but i want you guys to know that it's not coming from a place of i don't believe in it it's i actually really believe in it we're going to build something really awesome it's just going to be about like a year before it's like fully there well like it's not it's not it's always going to be a work in progress but until we achieve like the major milestones we want to including really distilling the value of research coin um that's going to be about a year away um because if you think about it edwin what is the value of a lot of these tokens there is so many so many tokens out there and i think they all like i get really frustrated when i go to all these home pages for all these uh, crypto projects. And I get very confused about what is it that they actually try to do. Vita DAO is one of the few that really is able to um, convey it at, uh, in one sentence uh, really easily. But I think I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shy away from telling you that, you know, we're still experimenting and uh, not super sure where research coin is going to go it's an experiment yeah i think um by the way i echo everybody's kind of in my opinion the only thing that makes this i think different than like a cookie cutter open access type of project is it has some kind of crypto component so we can layer in things like um you know you know uploading things to ipfs we can kind of mint like nfts or sub tokens to do crowdfunding or we can do um you know sbts as a kind of you know publication token badge whatever those are all cool things that we can do um i and and i don't i don't mind the the reward token design for research coin but i think one thing that like i think is very important to always keep in mind is 
it's easy to just reward somebody and distribute and emit the token. So you'll have an emission of that token. But equally important, you need to make sure that there's a compelling reason to purchase the token. Because if you just give out, give out a token and emit it, some of it gets retained, and then the other some of it gets sold. And if there's not enough buys to outweigh the sold, then you get like this ever depreciating um, token, um, which is something like, for example, like Uniswap. Uni token is just an ever depreciating token because its only value prop is governance. And to be frank, Vita token is pretty much like that as well, where there's no real like real yield that comes out of it. There's no like you have a claim on an IP, but you you can't you don't have the rights of that IP really. You just can direct like funding and and you know, so not to take a, a you know a jab at, at, at VitaDAO, but I think this is our opportunity to make the token not just be a just the governance token. And I think like if we want to build it as a rewards token, then we need to make sure that we very like um, deliberately um, incorporate it into the uh, functions on the platform, which is why I really like the bounty feature, because. Um, if you want to use the bounty feature, you're going to need to buy research coin to use it. And what does the bounty feature get you? It gets you kind of more premium answers to something. It gets you more uh, highlighted on the front page so someone can see it better, so they can answer it quicker. Um, and there's a nice com tokenomic component integrated in that, which is there's a little fee that goes along with it. And that fee helps sink some of the research coin into um, you know, the DAO or, or the Inc, or Research Hub Inc. And those are actual tokenomic methods where you reduce the velocity of the token um, and, and, and some of it funnels back into kind of the hands. And then you can do a, a burn a burn mechanism. Uh, Edwin mentioned this one to me. You can either do a burn mechanism or you can kind of keep it in your treasury, help bolster the treasury. So um, more things, in my opinion, like that bounty feature and more design, like where you have the features and you layer on the tokenomic ideas like the bounty feature. And I think we really need to explore grants as well. You know, so pre, yeah, pre registrations, pre registrations and grants definitely like I know Patrick has talked about quite a bit. Yeah. And I think well, um, that's where research coin like for example, like another thing, uh, and Jeff, I think it was your idea perhaps uh, where you mentioned that once we get into um, to funding and grants, then um, maybe um, holding research coin can buy you some like um, decision making into what projects get funded, and that is very uh, very powerful concept too. And that is why I always consider research coin as an experiment and. Uh, you know, we have a lot of compelling, interesting things we, we're going to be doing. So that's one of the few that really excite me. I, I, th I think that the, we have loads of great ideas and we've talked about these great ideas and you've even built the infrastructure for some of these great ideas. But I think you're going to keep coming into this issue, which is that you're never going to see the data and traction for the things that could work with the site set up as it is at the moment. And I wonder whether there's a way in which you can a, you know, test each feature against each other in a way that the UI is clearly understandable for that feature and you can get a clear signal without having to invest too much time and resources to building a brand new site for each feature, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's a very good point, Nathan. And I, I completely agree with you. I feel like, 100%. And I think uh, the best thing we can do right now is really, like, one, use our intuition, um, and two, um, use our intuition and data. Obviously, data is always there, and it helps guide the intuition. We, we test. We look at the database. We look at how people are doing things. And then we feel, you know, a bit stronger uh, opinion-wise about certain things. And the next thing we're going to do is show it to you, um, you guys here and collect some feedback and uh, show you the layout before we implement it and see if it makes sense to you. See if like you're able to understand what we're trying to do and also show it to a few new people. See if they get it so, and then we build it. Just a very, very quick example for the bounties feature. I created three bounties this week 
and I was, uh, but I'm unable to actually find those bounties. Like right. even you though I created them. them myself, I have to go via my profile to look at what my previous activity were to actually find my own bounties. Yeah, absolutely. The discoverability. By the way, what sparked this whole thing was just to throw the reason why this whole thing got started is because we are in a weird position where we have a lot of good content, but it's hidden behind um, a layer of content. So we have like really good discussions, bounties, um, questions, etc. But they're all behind papers and stuff like that, and it's hard to find them. The content discovery is not very good at the moment. And then we thought, hey, how can we improve content discovery? And that led to a whole reshifting and rethinking of the product. So yes, um, we will do it in such a way where bounties will be able to be found. And and we'll 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 make sure that bounties are able to be found before we even like tackle this whole greater product thing. Just FYI. Okay. Uh, Tyler? Yeah, it's a little tangential to the conversation now, but relating back to what I was talking about on on-chain publishing, one of the reasons why I was thinking about that could be useful uh, is another use case for the RSC coin. Because if you have this sort of on-chain publisher and you you know, you know have the traditional reviewership of peer review and editing, um, one thing you could do is launch uh, the, the publications as NFTs and then track their um, kind of interactions. So track their citations. And then if you want to allot you know, some research coin that people pay as a uh, registration fee, part of that to the citation pool, you can kind of give uh, royalties to authors based on their amount of citations. And the reason why I mentioned that is because then you attract not only the philanthropic people that typically donate to research, you know, because they have some loved one who wants to do this type of research or has this ailment, but then you can give them a stake in the IP that's generated specifically just through citations. You don't even need to have a product on the market. You just say, if I produce highly cited work, you're likely to see some return in RSC. Just, just another like, very broad view of what the token could be used for. Yeah, absolutely, Tyler. And, and that's actually exactly how we're thinking about NFTs at the moment. Uh, when time comes to implement them, and we've talked a lot about them, what you described is probably the approach we're going to take more or less. Yeah, and that, that's what it sounded like when I was talking to Jeff over, over the phone the other day too. So that was really exciting. I think that's going to be awesome. Okay, well, we've got um, about about a minute left. Um, if people don't mind, we can we can do a, like a few more minutes. If people are time constrained, you know, feel free to jump out. I know another talking point Toby wanted to do. I don't know how important it is. Is going to be like a, the reputation system, which personally I believe is the whole second arm of research. Really, it's I mean to be frank, it's funding. Well, probably three arms: publishing, funding, and reputation are kind right. of the, the big ones. So. I know that um, Ricardo was talking to, I think his name was Johnny. He was a, ph a philosophy student who they wanted to talk about doing a, um, a hackathon where they actually do like this big kind of hackathon for the reputation algo. Um, so yeah, anyway, Kobe, take it away with whatever you were kind of thinking about that. Yeah, and I was uh, chatting a bit with Satvik before the, uh, the call too. So the reputation system right now if you go to like the leaderboard you'll see patrick joyce at the top and uh obviously you know he's a great guy and all that but uh in an ideal world he should not be at the top and he would be the first one to say it too like it needs to be um you know people at their respective like fields and you should be able to like view like who are some of the top scientists in this and that field and uh the answer should not involve how active you are in Research Hub. It should be based on what you've done um, in science in your career. Now, the question is, how do we achieve that? That that's becomes a little tricky. Like, how do we how do we build a reputation system that doesn't necessarily involve the the discussions and the the, the activity that you've done on Research Hub? yet is able to capture um, the work that you've done in your career, in your respective field, so that when you come to Research Hub, we're able to quantify it and uh, port that work over, if that makes sense, if what I'm saying like is uh, clear enough. 
uh, so that we generate a number. And, and I know it's like, it's a tricky thing because then how do you quantify someone's work? How do you rate them against someone else? Do you use citations? Do you use the number H index? Do you use the number of like published works? Um, I don't have a clear answer. I have some intuition, but I'm love to hear some thoughts. So maybe uh, Nathan, since you raised your hand first. Yeah, I'm a bit... I'm a bit unclear by this question almost because um, the very fact that there's a leaderboard on the homepage, again, I think it's linked to what we were discussing before. It's almost like a bit of a, a mess in terms of what the mission is, because I, I thought that the point of the leaderboard was that we're incentivizing activity and through activity, the reputation increases and then you get to go higher on the leaderboard. But if what we're saying is actually reputation is based on real world scientific reputation, then actually that leaderboard isn't really relevant. Like, why are we ranking who is like the best scientist? Like, oh, yeah, maybe like, it should be both. <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe, it, maybe be, it should be like a little bit of what you've done before and, and some of your activity on the site as well. Um, okay, is, is that not, yeah. is that similar to what it is now? Or? So right now we base, um, like your reputation is based on like our algorithm of, that mainly takes into account your activity on the site and yeah. not what you have done outside of uh, Research Hub. Um, yeah, you can claim your paper and all that, but I don't even think, I, I actually don't think it uh, affects your reputation at the moment. Uh, so I guess like we can start with like the basic question of like, should the work that you have done outside of Research Hub, like, well, well, I guess like, let's take one step further, like, Scientific reputation um, is, uh, well, I guess I'm not a scientist, so I can't really speak too much of it. I can say what I know, which is uh, scientists work really hard to guard, to create like a reputation and they will try and, you know, maintain it at all costs because the, the reputation that they accrue really unlocks a lot of doors for them. So it is important, mm -hmm. but right now, the reputation system is a bit skewed and we want to create a reputation system that is based on actual contributions to science. And I know this is all like a bit uh, iffy of like, what is the actual contribution and all that? And, but maybe it's a starting point. So um, I know we're getting into like a whole general conversation here. So maybe, um, yes, I'll, I'll pause for a second and Edwin, maybe you can say whatever you want to and we can maybe refine it. A little more. Yeah, um, I think one thing would be good um, for some. Uh, well, do we think it'll help to actually make the parameters of the reputation system more explicit? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, another thing that I could imagine working. Um, first of all, the citation thing is tricky, right? Because we want to get away from how citations are currently done. So sure. we don't yes. want to reinforce that. Um, but having people bring their publications onto the site could be something that adds to their reputation, as well as just having people on the site uh, potentially like vote for them or you know give them some sort of uh, vote of confidence or something as something that could also contribute to their reputation. And it could be, you know, a vote of confidence in multiple domains. It doesn't have to be just like, I vote this person is competent. It could be uh, depending on, um, you know, this person is really good at doing these kind of bounties, that sort of thing. So I'm not sure exactly, but I think it should be more user, like the based on the users on the site, what they think of someone, um, than just sort of taking real world information and putting it on the site and then having a high reputation as a result of that. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I, w I wonder what uh, other people here have to say about uh, this topic and what Edwin said. I think um, like one way Edwin said, uh, one thing Edwin said that I, I do like is um, if they do port in their own publications, um, then it's almost like them doing the hard work of verifying, like like they're, they're putting up to say, hey, these are my 10 publications. And then we just need to, I don't know if we could just kind of go through like ORCID and see if, um, yeah, these 10 publications belong to this user. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think um, there is, um, OPSI has a, uh, 
a product uh, and I have not looked into it to be honest, but um, it's actually exactly this. It's kind of porting over like real world web two um, kind of scientific things um, and, and how that plays into your, uh, your reputation, decentralized identity. Um, and I think it is important. I mean, you can imagine some kind of top notch tenured PI coming onto the platform and having a reputation of a hundred, even though they have 200 publications and they've been a professor for a decade. Um, and we want to make sure to accurately represent them. Um, and so I guess mm -hmm. like Edwin, what you're saying is like, you let the, the community of research hub curate where those people's reputation stands by giving them votes of confidence. Um, so that could be like, I guess like the, as the more you can decentralize the operations of something like that, um, mm -hmm. kind of the more likely it is to work out instead of it all funneling to like the core team to do something or to, like have an ML filter that's like 80% success rate, you know, try to like do a reputation score for somebody. So I guess what I'm saying is I think we do need to import real world things, but after importing real world things, then maybe the community or like the editors or something like that can do a good job of carrying it. Yeah, I agree. As long as we don't focus on citations, since that's something we're really trying to get away from. Reproducibility. I wish there was like real papers had reproducibility scores. That's something yeah. we can implement going forward. Obviously at Research Hub is we have a reproducibility score and then your reputation is mm -hmm. off of how well that product was, or project was re reproduced. But the problem is there's no metadata in a uh, like a just a file um, or like through Open Alex or something like that where we'd be able to see how reproducible it was. So it'll be hard to use that as a metric for pre for published things already. But going forward, of course, we can. And I think even having that being something that's going forward would be very valuable because everybody's really aware of the problem of reproducibility in science right now. So just having that as something mm -hmm. we're working on, I think, would be really appreciated by a lot of academics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I know we're kind of like uh, a bit over time. I just want to th throw like one final idea at you. Um, it wasn't my idea. It was Patrick Joyce's idea, but maybe it's tied to the reputation and also publishing. So one of the ideas he had um, is that rather than what one way we can disrupt like uh, some of the big journals is by basically allowing people to upload their preprints um, like pre peer reviewed preprints um, to the site and you know that will be like maybe imagine like a paper page and you can have like one version that's like paywalled because of a particular journal but there is also you can read the pre peer reviewed version you can read it and um, that can be you know sufficient for a lot of different purposes in addition um and i was thinking that maybe that can also improve a person's reputation so imagine if you're willing to to do that um that can earn you a certain number of points um and yeah, I'm just curious to hear what uh, if if this is like even like a idea worth like uh, exploring or are there like obvious flaws with it? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm I'm at an academic institute. I feel like I I don't feel the pain of paywalls. Mm. Uh, maybe as other people would um, and so I don't know if I would be like a good person to answer answer this if the paywalls is a I think a much bigger issue than it is I think to academics then it could be some benefit I don't see it too high priority or like a high compelling thing mm -hmm. thanks Jeff okay cool um, anyone else I mean, controversial. This might be controversial take, but I I don't know if re reputation is actually the biggest issue for for the site at the moment because I feel like a lot of reputation comes from googling someone's name and seeing what you can find. And actually, you know, on Twitter, someone will put their credentials 
in their bio and on research hub you would do the same so you, it, your reputation comes from your institution it comes from your publications it comes from all these things and what are we adding on top of it other than activity on the site in terms of publishing your preprints again it, it is the purpose of reputation to incentivize good behavior or are we using reputation as a uh, you know barrier for non-educated users on whatever topic we're looking at to understand who are the main voices in this area i think we have to distinguish between those two uses of reputation it's a good point mm -hmm. yeah that, that is a good point um that is a good point <clears throat> yeah i um I don't have even, yeah, personally, I don't have a, a clear, like super strong opinion about the reputation. Um, I have a lot of strong opinions about other parts of the site, <laughs> but uh, I think it's all of you guys made really good points. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll chat about them with the internal team a bit more in the next week about the reputation feedback you just shared. And um and like prioritize like uh definitely there's like a bunch of glaring issues with the site so we'll go after them we'll make sure nathan you can found your find your bounties um and and reputation maybe will be like something we tackle a bit later um okay so i'll i'll stop here um yeah thanks a lot for the feedback um and i know we're over time so thank you for staying on for 13 additional minutes yeah, thanks for coming on, Kobe. I think this has been like pretty helpful for everybody. Um, even just getting a little bit of insight onto also where Research Hub team is kind of thinking on the direction and where the priorities and stuff lie. Um, I think we can probably stop it here. I think the only other topic that we had uh, was we have a lot of obviously new users who are flowing in, um, like Tyler and many others who are interested in being involved. And we got a lot of exposure, I think, through this Lex Friedman podcast. So there's a lot of what I found to be developers that are interested. Um, also, Kobe, I shot you over. There's a few more uh, Discord DMs oh, of people who, who want okay, to I'll check so, those out. Yeah, take a look. Um, but uh, so it, it will really be how can uh, we have all these people who are interested? They all have years of experience doing development or something with crypto. How can we best leverage those people to get involved? Um, and I think it would be better to make sure that we can distribute like kind of the bandwidth of everybody as much as possible so we can get more things done um, and reduce burden on a small group of people. So um, just worth mulling over, I think, until next week um, and see best where we can plug people in. Can I just say one last thing, Jeffrey? Yeah, 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 of course. I, I just want to say to, to Kobe, like we, I really appreciate you know the discussion that you're having, and I understand that it can't be easy when you've put so much time into you know developing these products, um, you know getting the criticism like like you have over the last hour. So I just wanted to say some positive things, which is that honestly every time we propose a feature, the way that it's come out has been actually fantastic, and really reflected what you know it, it, even something like the peer review feature or the bounty feature. I've, I've noticed things that we discussed on the calls being added to it in a really like sort of way that's true to, to what we were intending with it. And so I'm sure that actually in the long term vision or all, all this time will be will be really well spent and, and, and proved prove very productive. And I think the site is actually quite nice for first version of it. So <laughs> well, thanks guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um yeah, no, I actually really love um critical feedback because uh you know uh, sometimes we build things but you'll be surprised a lot of the things we build are kind of like annoy us and that's when we know there is a real problem when we build something and it's like oh like the first version of the peer review i was like i built it and i was like oh that that really sucked <laughs> gotta change that um <laughs> so I, I i really appreciate your feedback um and please keep it coming thank you very much yeah absolutely thank you so much kobe for for everything and uh and and please extend that out to the rest of the team too we see all the github updates on the discord of everybody putting in a lot of work on there so um yeah please do extend that out to 
to everybody else. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, it was great to meet everyone. Thanks again. Yeah, nice meeting you, Tyler. Yeah, bye everybody. Bye. Thanks.